Hey guys, this is Vyom Joshi with Superior North. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at BHP Group. BHP Group is registered with the SEC and incorporated in Australia. Its primary business is metal mining. BHP is a leading global diversified miner supplying iron ore, copper, oil and gas, and various types of coal. In 2019, it produced about 54 billion barrels of oil, 493 billion cubic feet of natural gas, and 1,689,300 tons of copper. The revenue is broken down into five segments. The first is petroleum, which makes up about 13% of the revenue. Second is copper, which makes up 24.5% of the revenue. Third is iron ore, which makes up 39% of the revenue. Fourth is coal, which makes up about 20.5% of revenue. And last is others, which consist of potash, silver, nickel, etc., which makes up about 3% of the revenue. The reason why we're looking at this security is because base metals are important to look at given that interest rates are going to be low for longer, which is going to incentivize people to borrow money. As we can see with the increased demand in home purchases, there is going to be demand for construction, and that construction needs raw materials such as iron and copper, and BHP is the leading company that provides those base metals. So now that we know what BHP does, let's look at the fundamentals. We'll review the key ratios. We'll perform a DCF, a discounted free cash flow analysis, and look at the expected rate of return calculation to see if we were to invest in BHP at these current valuations, what kind of returns can we expect on that investment? Now let's go dive in and look at BHP. Hey guys, let's look at the key ratios. I'm on Morningstar for BHP Group under key ratios. Looking at the financials, the first one we have on the list is the revenue, which is the top line of the company. All the numbers here are in millions of dollars. Back in 2011, the revenue was $71,739. And for the next six years, that revenue declined and it got to about $30,912 in 2016. And after that, we saw a recovery in the numbers. The 2020 figure is $42,931 million. Similar to the revenue for the operating income, we saw that the operating income declined from 2011 through 2016. And then we saw the operating income recover and is now at about $14,757 million as of 2020. Net income, which is the bottom line of the company, has a similar trend where it declined from 2011 through 2016. And after that, we saw a recovery in the bottom line. And as of 2020, the net income is about $8,000 million. Next is the dividends. We can see that the dividends are not increasing for the past 10 years. In fact, they're fluctuating. And this is because BHP Group has a policy where 50% of the attributed profits are being paid out to the shareholders. So depending on how much profits the company makes will govern the dividend payout to the shareholders. This is the reason why we see the cyclicality in the dividends. This is good because it tells us that the company is not gonna borrow money and try to pay more than what it's making to its shareholders. Next is the shares outstanding. We can see that back in 2011, there were about 2,770 million shares outstanding. And as of 2020, there were about 2,535 million shares outstanding. This shows that BHP Group has been buying back its shares. This is good for the existing shareholders because it increases their ownership within the company. Next, we will be looking at the free cash flow. The free cash flow is simply operating cash flow minus capital spending. And we can see that for the past 10 years, the free cash flow has been positive, except in 2013. I will be using the past 10 years of free cash flows from 2011 through 2020 for my expected rate of return calculation. And I will be using the 2020 figure of $8,806 million for my discounted free cash flow DCF analysis to figure out what the intrinsic value is for BHP Group. Next, let's look at the profitability of the company. The net profit margin is simply the ratio of net income to the net sales. So to the bottom line compared to the top line. And it tells us how much of the sales actually get converted to the bottom line profit number. Over the past 10 years, we can see that the net margin has always been in double digits, except in 2015, 2016, and 2018. For the year 2020, the net margin was about 19%. So every $100 that BHP Group made on its sales, by the time it paid for the cost of goods, the expenses, the interest, taxes, it had about $19 left as pure profit. 
as shareholders, we have to figure out how, what kind of return can we get on the equity that we invest in the company. And the return on equity figure gives us an idea of what return can we get on our investment. And we can see that for the past 10 years, the re return on equity has always been positive, except in 2016, when we saw the negative earnings. For 2020, the return on equity was about 17%. Ideally, we want to invest in companies that has been giving us a return on equity of about 8% for the past 10 years. So it looks like for three years out of the past 10 years, back in 2015, 2016, and 2018, were the only three years when DHP Group did not give us a positive 8% or greater return. Next is the return on invested capital. This number gives us an idea of how good the management is at investing the capital and getting a return on that investment. We can see that for the past 10 years, the return has always been positive, except in 2016. The return on invested capital for 2020 was about 11%, which is pretty good given the fact that we just had an economic slowdown due to the pandemic. Next, let's look at the financial health, specifically focusing on the liquidity measures. The current ratio, which is a ratio of the current assets to the company's current liabilities, a number greater than one tells us that the company has enough liquidity to survive for another 12 months. We can see that BHP Group's current ratio for the year 2020 was 1.45, which tells us that the company is not in a bind, is not trying to sell assets to generate liquidity to pay off its current obligations. Next is the financial leverage. We can see that for the past 10 years, the financial leverage has slowly been increasing. Back in 2011, it was 1.81, and as of 2020, it's 2.19. Even though BHP Group's financial leverage is increasing, it is not increasing to the point where things are getting out of control, which is evident when we look at the debt to equity ratio, which is simply looking at the company's debt to the shareholder's equity. And for the debt to equity ratio, we want a number to be less than one, and it's even better if it's less than 0.5. And as of 2020, the debt to equity ratio for BHP Group was 0.46. And this goes to show that BHP Group is not financially leveraged to the point where it is bound for failure. Next, let's look at the efficiency ratios, specifically focusing on the day's inventory. The day's inventory tells us how many days does BHP Group's inventory actually stay as inventory before it is sold out. And back in 2011, it, was, it took about 90 days. And as of 2020, it takes about 86 days for BHP Group to get rid of its inventory. Next, let's look at the cash conversion cycle. We can see that from 2017 to 2020, the numbers have been negative. This is interesting, and I think Amazon has been the only other company that have seen this cash conversion cycle as negative. And this just means that the company is getting money before it has to pay money. For example, let's say you own a company and uh, you make sales, get the money back from that purchaser in 30 days. Now you have other obligations such as your utility bill, which is due in 90 days. In this example, it would be a negative 60 day cash conversion cycle because now you have 60 days where you have free money. You can play around with that money because your obligation is not due for another 60 days. So a negative number simply means that your working capital is freed up. The last number we'll look at for the efficiency ratios is the inventory turnover. We can see that for the past 10 years, the inventory turnover has been fairly steady about four times. This means that BHP Group's inventory goes through its system four times in a calendar year. Next, let's look at the valuations for BHP Group. We will be comparing BHP Group's valuations to that of the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is simply the aggregate of the top 500 companies in the United States. The first ratio is the price to earnings ratio. BHP Group has a ratio of 16.4 as compared to S&P 500, which is about 26. So from a price to earnings measure, BHP Group is undervalued. Next is the price to book. BHP Group's price to book ratio is 2.7 as compared to S&P 500, which is 3.6. So even on this measure, BHP Group is undervalued. The third one is the price to sales. BHP Group is at 3.0 as compared to S&P 500, which is at 2.5. Similar to the other two, it's undervalued on this measure as well. Fourth is the price to cash flow. BHP Group is at 8.3 as compared to S&P 500, which is about 15. Again, BHP Group is undervalued for this ratio as well. The last one is the dividend yield. BHP Group has a dividend yield of 4.7% as compared to the S&P 500, which is about 2%. So all these valuation measures show that as compared to the aggregate 500 companies, BHP Group is undervalued. Hey guys, let's look at the discounted free cash flow DCF analysis for BHP Group. 
I'm using the 2020 figure of $8,806 million as BHP Group's free cash flow. Next, I'm assuming that BHP Group's free cash flow will grow at 5%. I'm using my discount rate to be 10%. I'm using my long-term growth rate of 2%. The 2% growth rate is what I expect BHP Group to grow past 10 year mark into perpetuity. Then I have the shares outstanding, which is 2,535 million shares outstanding. Next is the net debt, which is at $12,044 million. After taking all these inputs into account, I get my intrinsic value for BHP Group to be about $49 per share. And the way I calculate this intrinsic value is by looking at what my free cash flows would be for my first year, second year, third year, fourth year, 10th year in the future. I discount all those free cash flows back to the present value. Then I look at what the free cash flows would be from the 10 year mark into perpetuity. And then I discount all those free cash flows back. And so I have the sum of free cash flows for the first 10 years, then sum of free cash flows from the 10 year mark into perpetuity. And then I subtract my net debt from the sum of free cash flows, and I divide that number by my shares outstanding, and I get the intrinsic value to be about $49 per share. Hey guys, now let's look at the expected rate of return calculation for BHP Group. Over here, I pasted the 10 years of free cash flow that I got from Morningstar. The hills and valleys in the trend show the cyclicality of the business and how commodity prices influence the profitability of the business. Next, for my future data and predictions, I'm assuming that there's a 25% likelihood that BHP Group's free cash flow will grow at 8%. There's a 50% likelihood that the free cash flow will grow at 3%, and a 25% likelihood that the free cash flow will grow at negative 2%. These are the potential free cash flow rates that I get. And after taking my numbers of shares outstanding, which is 2,535 million, the current stock price of $51.50, I'm getting an expected rate of return of about 7.3%. This means that if I were to invest in BHP Group at the current valuation of $51.5 per share, I would be getting a 7.3% return on that investment. Hey guys, now let's wrap it all up. We saw that BHP Group is a leading global diversified miner. It is involved in mining various commodities such as petroleum, coal, iron, potash, silver, copper, etc. We saw that even though BHP Group's sales and earnings were declining from 2011 through 2016, over the past few years, those numbers have recovered. Despite the ups and downs in the sales, the gross profit margin has been steady for the past 10 years. BHP Group has provided commendable return on equity and return on invested capital. As far as the liquidity goes, we saw that BHP Group is liquid and can survive for another 12 months. It is not over leveraged and can sustain any downturns in the market. After that, we compared the BHP Group to the S&P 500 and noticed that on all those valuation metrics, BHP Group was undervalued to the S&P 500. We performed the discounted free cash flow DCF analysis and found the intrinsic value of BHP Group to be about $49 per share. As we can see, the current stock price is about $51.5 per share. So the intrinsic value is pretty close to where the stock is trading right now. When we looked at the expected rate of return calculation, we saw that if we were to invest in BHP Group at $51.5 per share, we would get a return of about 7%. As far as the future is concerned, we know that due to the economic downturn and the increased unemployment levels, governments are going to spend money on infrastructure. That infrastructure is going to need commodities such as iron and copper, and BHP Group is perfectly situated to provide those commodities for the infrastructure expansion. BHP Group is also aware of the global push towards reducing carbon emissions and stopping climate change. It is focusing on this future goal by reducing its expansion in the petroleum segment of its business. BHP Group is expanding in its copper, nickel, and potash business, and it is well positioned to benefit when the demand for electricity and agriculture increases. As we start focusing on the future as to how the government's going to spend its money and how BHP Group is positioning its portfolio and how it may act out in the future, I wanted to quickly go over one of the paragraphs from Ben Graham's Intelligent Investor, Chapter 14, where Benjamin Graham says that those who emphasize protection are always especially concerned with the price of the issue at the time of the study. Their main effort is to assure themselves of a substantial margin of indicated present value above the market price. 
which margin could absorb unfavorable developments in the future. Generally speaking, therefore, it is not so necessary for them to be enthusiastic over the company's long-term prospects as it is to be reasonably confident that the enterprise will get along. So what Benjamin Graham is saying here is that our goal as investors, as defensive investors, is to focus on protection over prediction. We have to make sure that we have a greater margin of safety so that when we invest in the security, we are more than likely to get our money's worth and our probability of loss is minimized. And even if the market value were to go down, we eventually would profit because we had such a great margin of safety. And now we can think about how we're going to get that margin of safety. And when we do a little bit of research on BHP Group, we know that BHP Group is the majority owner and operator of the largest copper mine in the world. So that is an advantage to them. And that mine happens to be in Chile. And while Chile is considered a developed country, the labor in Chile is not as expensive as you would see in other developed countries. In other words, BHP Group can produce copper at an advantage because the labor for them is a lot cheaper and then sell in countries such as United States or any country in Europe where it can enlarge its profit margin and have a competitive advantage. And lastly, as a diversified miner, BHP Group is not exposed to one specific commodity. For example, when BHP Group's petroleum segment started losing money due to the government shutdown and people not traveling, its iron ore mining segment gained traction as China reopened and started investing in its economy. Even though with the discounted free cash flow DCF analysis, with a 10% discount rate, I'm getting my intrinsic value to be about $49. When factoring in the competitive advantage, comparing BHP Group to the aggregate 500 companies in the United States, and looking at the expected rate of return of about 7%, we can be fairly certain that BHP Group is undervalued. And if we include the possibility that government infrastructure spending is going to increase due to the increase in employment and the government slowdown, we can be certain that BHP Group is undervalued at the current stock price of $51.5 per share. That is all I have for you guys this week. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.